Hey there, hi there, ho there, my Virgo collective. Who you calling a home? <laughs> Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your seven card draw. Uh, what do I need? Shadow card reading uh, for this full moon in Sagittarius waning to new in Gemini. I am your reader. Mark Angelo Lyons Mal for short, professional witch, professional intuitive president of Drawing the Circle Productions, Virgo Sun Sign, <laughs> the Archangel of Lyons, Mark Angelo Lyons, but you can call me Mal, my Vargs, Virgo Power. Uh, let's get down to business. Uh, my guides change up the readings every time, even though they're in playlists, right? <laughs> Waxing moon, waning moon readings. This is a waning moon read. Uh, this time around, because of, um, well, I'm going to tell you, a lot of planets in, in retrograde. Mercury amongst them. Uh, Mercury retrograde in its sign of Gemini. We are mutable Earth. They are mutable air. So actually, they square us. So that could be a little tricky. So for all the signs, we are doing what's called a shadow read. Seven card draw, one card from seven different decks. We got two tarot decks, uh, two healing systems, and three oracles to get you the clues, tips, and hints you need to alchemize this to do the waning part of this, the letting go, the releasing, the forgiving. And I say alchemy because I speak the language of alchemy, the symbolic spiritual alchemy, fluently in that it's the lead to gold ratio, right? Like, let's say what you want to manifest in your life in a certain area, you need 51% gold to 49% lead, and you're still at 50-50, right? So what is that one piece of gold that has the three extra atoms, or I should say three more atoms than gold on the periodic table, right? have to be transformed. Energy can't be created or destroyed, only changed, right? So uh, that's this process. So... Um, you know, I, I, I've been watching other readers, and I'm hearing them say it too, and I do feel it. Um, standard YouTube reading rules apply, right? I will never understand why someone does a thumb down, a thumbs down on somebody's uh, reading that they're giving. They're hard. Uh, it's hard work, right? Just the preparation to do it and the lighting and, you know, all of that. It's either not, it's either you're reading or it's not. So I really see that if someone does a thumbs down, it's, it's either they don't know that, and even though we say it in every single reading on YouTube, right? Or it is their reading, and they don't like what they see, and it's our fault somehow, so whatever. Uh, you know, take it as it resonates, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and aside from that, check your other signs, because uh, this could be showing you a piece of the shadow you need to heal within yourself to get you just to maybe that 51% gold. Uh, but your other signs might very well show you other circumstances or other situations to do that. You need to do that in, or maybe this one from a different POV point of view, right? So both feet on the floor, if you can, focus on your breath, if you will. Stay nice and grounded right here. But partner with the breath for this, right? Uh, uh, so that you're breathing in all you need from spirit. I'll be doing the same to get you the clarity, guidance, and grace I can from my pantheons through these decks to you for the well-being of all. Please take a nice deep breath. Right, they always remind me, except to say that all the decks that I read are always in the bottom of the description box with links, right, and lots of cool stuff on the way. Let's see what this is about. I am a Virgo. I try and stay out of my readings, but sometimes my guides are like, hee hee, <laughs> right, so I just got to go with it and be authentic because that's why you keep coming back. I may not have the biggest numbers on YouTube, but I'm the fun one and you're getting the real deal with me. I will spill the tea, but compassionately so. Again, please take a nice deep breath. Oh, it's always that breath. <coughs> Excuse me, here we go. Carolyn Mace, archetype deck. Uh, my collective pantheons of angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, ascended masters, general assembly, and the higher selves of all involved. Please, what is the dominant archetype in play for the Virgo collective sun, moon, rising, Venus? watching this video, receiving this reading, uh, whether it's their own, somebody else's situation, some of that, all of that, holographically, sometimes the, the archetype drops in for a reason, a season, or an entire lifetime, and it's a lens that, that you're developing that certain kind of power, right? So then what is the alchemy that we need to do, the shadow work we need to do from shadow light, toxic to healthy, lead to gold? I'll say we, I'm a Virgo, uh, this full moon in Sagittarius waning to new in Gemini, the slave archetype. Now, don't freak. Now, the funny thing is, is this is in the title. So in a weird <coughs> uh, quantum timey-wimey way, you know what the card is before I do really true with all of these. Uh, the slave archetype is a wild card family archetype. And there are nine families, right? Uh, Carolyn Mace's book, Sacred Contracts is a brilliant introduction, and these are her cards, so you can get the deck and the cards. I'm not getting no kickbacks from that, by the way, though. It's just I have. 
both of those things, right? And plus tons of videos that she's done on YouTube. So really, uh, Carolyn Mace rabbit hole is worth going down. Now, as I said, the shadow and the light. This is a shadow read. So this is the lead, this is the gold. So I gotta tell you, as horrible as the slave sounds, particularly for a Virgo, because we're always in service, right? It's our thing, sun, moon, rising, Venus, whatever. Uh, there's a difference between the servant and the slave. The servant is the healing family of archetypes. The slave is in the wild card because you never know what you're going to get. Now, a triggering word for sure, but if you see it from a spiritual alchemy point of view, the shadow attribute, giving your willpower to an external authority out of fear of making your own choices, that makes it a throat chakra thing, will willpower, choices, decisions, right? Fr terrified to make your own, so you just abdicate. You just give that power away, and who the hell hasn't done that a reason, a season, or a lifetime, even past lifetimes? So the alchemy, and this could be somebody else, right? Like, again, I don't know you. <laughs> I'm just reading the vibe that's coming through the collective here. Uh, this could easily divide itself up into three different categories, right? One where this is your archetype, one where it's somebody else's that you're dealing with, and then the third where the whole situation is teaching you something about that, and in that case, it would like be both of you having it. Uh, the light attribute you're shooting for, and once I say this, you'll get it, surrendering your power of choice to the divine with complete trust. Thy will be done. It's what turns the slave into the master. See, I am not a slave. I mean, the archetype, oh, I'm sure it's coming, you know, right? There's reason, season, lifetime. Reason could be for a day. Season could be for a period of your life. But lifetime is from womb to tomb, right? From birth to death. Uh, it can come in with me for a season and sometimes for a reason, but I'm a mystic, so I will just, every morning I surrender my will to the divine, but they said to me a long time ago, um, you are servant of the gods and slave to no man. Well, and no human is what they meant, like, no one here on the horizontal, baby, it's all about the vertical, right? <coughs> so, this is not abdication of power as much it is, as it is surrendering your power of choice to the divine with complete trust, and I highly, highly recommend a book earlier than Sacred Contracts by her, Anatomy of the Spirit, the Throat Chakra chapter, because that deals really directly with the sacred truth of the Throat Chakra, surrender your will to the divine. Very holographic, let's keep going. Healing with the Angels Oracle, please take a nice deep breath. Because <sighs> these are my archangels, here we go. My angels and archangels of Earth and the uh, element of the North, the Aerialites, the Uriolites, the Aureolites. Oh, yeah, please. What is the healing angel for the Virgo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? I'm watching this video, receiving this reading that they need to call upon, work on, like think about, embody, I don't know, whatever it is that they do in their uh, Virgo spiritual practice. Because this slave archetype, it seems like it's about the divine in some way, shape, or form. Whatever their higher power is, the X variable of spirit, God, God of Zeus, Buddha, Jesus, Fred, Wilma, Zan, Jaina, Diana, Themyscira. Please, my beautiful archangels, what is the perfect healing angel for them to help them alchemize and do the shadow work with that slave archetype, this full moon and Sag, waning to new in Gemini? Trust. Uh, surrendering the pow your power of choice to the divine with complete trust. That's why I get paid the big bucks <laughs> on YouTube now. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. This is the healing angel that you need to alchemize this. Because if you've been betrayed before, and who amongst us has not, right? Even if you can't even trust yourself to trust the right people because somebody comes in. You know, a family member doesn't matter. Uh, and you're like, oh my god, this is so exciting. Oh, I want to give every... Oh. Right? And then... <laughs> womp, womp, right? And it's like, what's wrong with me? Why did I feel that way, right? This is really saying, I don't know why. And I will only know why when I absolutely need to know why. So here's the prayer I say every morning, and I got it from Matt Kahn. His uh, Healing Mantra deck is one of the last cards down here. Uh, uh, 
uh, the most important dis spiritual decision you'll ever make is what I think his video on YouTube is, Matt Kahn, All for Love, really. The clients that I've turned on to his channel, they're like, oh my god, I've been to watch them. My life is completely different, it's true. Uh, um, but uh, every morning, uh, I say, I, I call upon the universe to work through me today to bring to life my most fulfilling reality, to make every choice, every decision, through me, on my behalf, right? To, and I even go so far as to say to do every reading, right? To produce every video, to manifest every outcome in alignment with my soul's high wisdom and reality of the golden timeline for the well-being of all that I am now. And so it is done. I mean, it's under a minute. And certainly that takes me on the quantum journey of the day, Virgo. But when you get that, oh, I'm not surrendering to any of these mother and father fuckers down here. No, 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 no. Whoop. Whoop. Done. Let's keep going. <coughs> I mean, if I'm going to be a slave, I want to be a slave to the rhythm. Words of Grace. Jones. <laughs> Words of Grace is the name of my book. Words of Grace from a Professional Witch. There's a link in the description box if you want to check it out. Uh, let's ground this a little bit more. Crystal Oracle, right? Uh, whether it's what's written in the book, because that book has, is oracular. It really says this is going to happen, and then it kind of fucking does. Uh, but even if it's the stone that you have, it could be your experience of it, or if you want to go get it. Uh, I mean, I worked in the gem and mineral industry adjacently, working in metaphysical New Age retail and healing centers and all that for decades in the 80s and 90s, even in the 2000s and the 2010s, right? So uh, the, I'll, I'll see what they have to say. And this is the voice of Archangel Ariel, one of the archangels of the north and the powers of Earth. Please take a nice deep breath. I'm going to get cat hair on my nose. It's when you head bonky right before you go on camera. The heart says yes, the nose says no. <laughs> Breathe. And believe me, every morning I am with Ariel. My beloved Archangel Ariel, powers of uh, Earth and the North, please. What is the perfect crystal healing oracle here? Tony Carmine Solaire knows perfect. Uh, a perfect mineral touchstone, something they can hold on or at least focus on to help them alchemize this this slave archetype from lead to gold with the healing angel of trust, which could not be more synchronistic and perfect. Right? What is that stone, that gem, that mineral that would help them, this us, this full moon to Sag, waning to new? And Gemini, oh, I've got all the smoky quartz. Yay, I have that. <clears throat> Checkmate. <laughs> nice. Pointy, pointy, ninety, ninety. All right, we're going over there. Good. <laughs> Smoking quartz. I am a Virgo. Like everything I need is right behind me or on the sideboard over there. Right. Well, I wouldn't say I'm large and in charge. <laughs> Good. Skinny and cuter as I got older. Go fig. Uh, I'm going to read this from the bookie book. Smoky Quartz, not that hard to find. I mean, you hear tell of people taking citrine and irradiating it, uh, exposing it to radiation, so that it looks like Smoky Quartz, but I think citrine would be a more expensive stone than Smoky Quartz, so buyer beware. I will say that. I do know that. I, I, I remember coming across a piece back in Huntington, uh, 19 something something. <laughs> 19. Blah, 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 blah. QRS smoky quartz, uh, emotional blockage, negative thoughts, release, oh, release, uh, uh, grounding and protection. Those are the key words. Let's see what this has to say. This beautiful smoky quartz crystal has appeared in your reading today to help you release and express the many emotions that you have kept suppressed for quite some time. Now, that almost sounds like, I don't know, like shadow work or something. Uh, there is an emotional cause to all physical symptoms. Be careful with that. The spiritual ego can run with that in really toxic ways that is completely untrue. So, you know, be compassionate with yourself. Just give yourself the love that only you can give you. And then the universe usually takes care of the rest moment by moment. There is an emotional cause to all physical symptoms. So know that by acknowledging and expressing how you feel, you allow healing to occur. And that I will say in um, the holistic paradigm of healing, real holistic health, not just rescue remedy and arnica cream, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, the four lower bodies of holism instead of assholism, right? Right? So the, what? the spirit affects the mind, the mind affects the emotions, the emotion affects the body. Spirit, like if you want to say fire, 
air, water, earth, right? If you want to do the, 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 the magical element. Um, so keep that in mind, right? Uh, that expressing your emotions in a healthy way is, all, is what really what shadow work is, but it's not just the fun, friendly ones. It's the ones that you, like the fear of making your own choices and decisions, because you may not be able to feel you can trust your own choices or trust your own gut, because it happens. And Virgos, we can be so up here with that. Uh, so this will ground you, right? Do not be afraid to cry, for your tears will wash away your sadness and restore your emotional, mental, and physical well-being. And honestly, when you do it in prayer, and it's really from your heart, you're crying tears of holy water. When the goddess said that to me last year, I was like, oh my God, and she goes, and you always have. It's not like you just started now. There is a jewel to be found in every teardrop. Oh, it's a metaphor, but really great. Uh, trust. It says it right there. Trust. I mean, get the book. Look at Smoky Quartz. Trust! Exclamation point. This card signifies that healing is occurring right now. <laughs> Where's my drag fan? I want a thwarp. Of course it's on the other side of that. <gasps> thwarp! Work! <laughs> if you're not watching Trixie and Katya on YouTube, you're missing out on some serious Ascended Master Awakening going on there, because they are healing me. Ooh, for filth. Let's keep going. We've got one healing system on the table with Carolyn Mace. We've got two oracles, right? Healing angels and the crystal oracle. Let's get our two tarot on the table. We're going to take Daughters of the Moon tarot. What's going on inside of y'all? Heart, third, third eye crown, right? The interior, interior world, the divine feminine aspect of self. Uh, we use the mythic tarot to look at the root sacrum solar plexus, the masculine, the external, either what this looks like from the outside looking in, like looking at yourself, sort of popping out, see me, kind of Tiffany aching energy there, comment if you know what that means, uh, 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 or some aspect of the physical world. Now before I even start pulling these, understand then that the slave archetype is that eighth chakra. It's that archetypal pattern, a filter, if you will, really channeling energy into your energy system so that you learn to, to alchemize, do the shadow work with this slave archetype, even if you be a slave to a, to a corporation, you be a slave to all sorts of things, right? Let's do this. Please take a nice deep breath. Just want to make sure my Virgo brothers and sisters know what I'm doing. For some reason, the other signs, eh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. But, you know, I've been teaching tarot. <laughs> Let's just not go there. Please take a nice deep breath. And yes, sometimes I feel like a slave to YouTube. It is absolutely true, but I go into prayer. So, my goddesses of Earth and the sign of Virgo, please, one card in clarity for the Virgo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Watching this video, receiving this uh, reading, please. Uh, what do we, they, the Virgo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, watching this video, receiving this reading, need to be aware of inside of themselves? Heart, throat, third eye, crown dynamic, the slave archetype definitely looking at the throat chakra there. Surrender your will to the divine is the sacred truth of the throat chakra. Calling in the healing angels of trust. And that's a throat chakra thing too, right? To, to make the prayer, to make the choices, the decisions to do that. And with that smoky quartz, right? That protection, they have protection that we need to feel our feelings and express them in a healthy way. At least saying how we feel, right? It, getting it off our chest, out of the cell tissue, into the water, up through fire and into air. So that's heart, throat, third eye crown, please. What do they need to be aware of inside of themselves? Myself included, perhaps, this full moon and Sag waning to new in gem. Hochma. Uh, this is Eight of Blades. Now, you know, traditional Eight of Blades, right? You know, right away version, blindfolded and bound. This is not that. That's why I love Daughters of the Moon Tarot. Um, this is Chokhmah, one of the spheres in the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, number one. Number two, here depicted as uh, a desert goddess of the wind, right? Element of air, juggling eight scimitars. <laughs> you're either handy or not after that, right? Handy with blades or not so much, right? So so what are the decisions? The keyword on the card is called decisions. Now, I will say this, right? Um, um, surrendering your power of choice to the divine with... Com it's in here, right? This is very, very, uh, I will say, even for a general reading, a little systematically uh, synchronistic here. They're all saying the same thing, uh, particularly with the shadow work part of it, right? How you express that stuff, very throat chakra. So inside of yourself, oh, gee, Virgo, could we be all up in our heads? 
Right, not necessarily indec indecisive, but sometimes we can get blinded by all of the different thoughts. Different than the Nine of Swords, which is really overwhelmed. This is uh, this can be all right. They're giving me the perfect image, right? This can be, um, uh, uh, if if not overwhelmed, standstill, where it's like you're standing in the middle of a desert, and no matter which direction you look, it all looks the same. Right, you go in one direction, you could die. You go in another, you could li so trust. But trust in what? Your higher power, God, God is Zeus, Buddha, Jesus, etc., whoever. <laughs> the mother of all is who my perfect love and perfect trust goes to. Because before the Tao, there was the mother of all. And that's what she said to me. And my mind exploded. So please take a nice deep breath. Oh, very different vibe. Oh, my God's birth and the sign of Virgo. That actually felt really delicious. One card in clarity, please, for the Virgo, Virgo Collective. Ooh, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I just Kundalini spark shut up my spine there. Uh, one card in clarity, uh, root, sacrum, solar plexus dynamic. What's going on here for the Virgo Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm watching this video. Receiving this uh, reading, alchemizing the slave archetype through shadow work with the healing angel of trust, smoky quartz, and uh, that decision card, Hokma, which is, by the way, one of the spheres of the tree of life, but in Anatomy of the Spirit, again, uh, Carolyn Mace, Hokma is in the third eye chapter there, right? And that is more the divine feminine aspect, is Binah the other one, and that's the divine masculine, like one's. Uh, divine intelligence and one's the contact point. Go check it out, Virgos, if you're into that stuff, because there is a key there for some of y'all. My gods, what does this look like on the outside, either from the outside looking in or some aspect of the physical? They need to know about this full and sag to that n new and gem. Nine of Pentacles, the precursor to the Empress card, digging it big time. Darling, you're holding your own. You are grounded or you're dealing with somebody like this. So how often is it that when we finally say, I surrender my will to the divine, uh, Marianne Williamson has a really good qu quote about that. It's in the book, a return, to, or a return to Love, which I recommend to people to this day still. Uh, she said, you know, when I first surrendered my will to the divine, I'm paraphrasing wildly here. She said, at first I thought there would be this grandiose moment, right? This transcendent moment. So she said, and there was, but then immediately after I just felt busted. <laughs> right? It's like there was all this love here and it was me that was holding it back. So, uh, you know, th there's, a, there's, a, there's a real piece here about you being, um, having everything you need in the outside world, but as a result of surrender, right? All this thinking that we can do, and trust me, like I said, I, I could feel like a slave, and they just said to me when I said, like, slave to YouTube, I'm not a slave to YouTube. I'm a slave to my own schedule with nobody else gives a shit about but me, right? I say it all the time. She goes, why are you working? I say, because I'm, I'm keeping a schedule that no one, because to me, that's a Virgo thing, right? So to maybe surrender that, right? Throw it all up in the air and say, you show me what to do and I will do my best, right? But Nine of Pentacles is such a great card for us because it's saying, I'm better, I'm bolder, I'm wiser, I'm calmer, I'm tougher, I'm stronger, I'm cooler. Oh, I said calmer twice. I got it together and all I know, all I know is love will save the day, right? the 90s, right? All I know is, uh, I love that song. You gotta be bad, you gotta be bold, you gotta be wiser, right? Well, that's kind of us. Not at the 10. Not at the 10. But do we see that we're at the 9? Like, I really feel like that's from the outside looking in. We're talking, I mean, it's an earth card. Oh, what an interesting read. Let's see. Let's keep going. Uh, the Ascended Masters, General Assembly, can be about anything, right? Not necessarily feeling this is a soul contract read. I don't know what's necessarily about work. It seems to be really, really larger scope here. And <laughs> let's keep in mind, Mercury retrograde in Gemini, squaring your Virgo, whoever, whatever, right? At some point, once it retrogrades, stops and then moves forward again. Please take a nice deep breath. My Ascended Masters General Assembly, what is the perfect healing mantra from the Healing Mantra deck by Matt Karn? Kind of give us something to work on, particularly with this decision. There's a lot of mental in there, right? With that emotional healing, the Healing Angel of Trust, right? Alchemizing the slave archetype, you feel so damn powerless. And yet, 
you're a breath away from the most powerful thing that you can do, surrendering your will to the divine, right? So with this Nine of Pentacles, there's almost this sense of like, you've got this on the outer. Don't worry so much about the physicality of it, right? The money, the stability, the relationships, whatever they are. This is about you. Please, what is their perfect healing mantra to help them alchemize this, this full moon in Sag, waning to new in Gemini? I love this! Unraveling codependency. Only I have to feel good about my choices. <gasps> Thwarp! I'm going to start keeping a drag fan handy again. I stopped it. So I use them in sacred practice now. <laughs> yes, I use drag fans in sacred practice, don't ask. Uh, unraveling codependency. I love this card. It's not my favorite. My favorite is inviting ecstasy. I am worthy of all the pleasure my heart <laughs> desires. I was like, I feel so seen. But unraveling codependency. Oh, honey. Co oh, honey. Honey. Codependency is just as toxic as heroin addiction. All right, oh, granted, different kind of addiction, right? Not so much the physical uh, thing in that way, but, and, and everybody needs people. And codependency is one of the four ego wounds, according to Matt Kahn, author of this uh, deck, as well as really three Hay, Hay House books that have helped me and a lot of my clients immensely. Uh, he says it's abuse, neglect, codependency, and loss. Now, maybe you were abused, maybe you weren't. Uh, maybe you were neglected, maybe you weren't. Maybe you were codependent or la looped into a codependent contract, just written into the life you incarnated into, but everyone ha or not, but ma but everyone has right loss, right? Everyone experiences loss, and who's taught how to deal with that real well? So unraveling codependence, I can't believe this. It's throat chakra. Only I have to feel good. Only I have to feel good about my choices like surrendering them to the divine. And if it makes other people explode, you're blowing up. You are alchemizing, being a slave to a codependent relationship. Holy shit, the <laughs> Belushi is in the room. Holy shit. Animal House, just go watch it. Uh, unraveling codependency. Only I have to feel good about my choices. Now, okay, they're giving me a sidebar, sidebar. I said this to a friend of mine, he got it in a reading, it wasn't a professional reading, and he goes, well, that, that, that could really create a lot of danger. I go, no, it, you feel good about your choices. Burning down the house is not a good feeling choice, if you think about it. So when codependency unravels, you are able to move freely in the direction of your heart's desire without needing permission from others. My God, have I embodied this fucker, this past year or so. As codependency fades, you are able to honor the emotional reactions of others as crucial stages of their healing journey without taking responsibility for them. How can you? If you step on somebody else's landmine by following your path, your heart's desire, which is part of the divine plan of all that is, surrendering, if you step on somebody's hidden landmine, however you want to see that, trigger them, right? <laughs> whatever emotion comes out, but you surrender your will to the divine, and that's what you were supposed to do there. And it's not that you're not responsible for it. You're just not responsible for the reaction. You're responsible for saying, well, <laughs> I said the prayer. I did this, right? I didn't know what to do. I had this big decision to make, right? Standing in the middle. So how many people are in on that choice or that decision that you have to make? where it's only you who can make it, but I get the fear of that. Will you be rejected? Will, is there financial things going on there? Are there skeletons in the closet? They know, right? What is holding you back? This was written into the life then before you ever incarnated. Your soul was chosen to play this role to learn this particular lesson. And this is Mercury retrograde we're dealing with. Uh, the last part of this I think is really key. This mantra is ideal for healing family dynamics, because even if you're not dealing with you know, biological family, that's where we learn it from usually, cultivating emotional freedom, there's no other way to go for me, and reclaiming a personal power, thwarp, <laughs> invisible, invisible, well, audible, but invisible thwarp, unraveling codependency, and it's again about choice, uh-oh, here we go, last card down, I don't think that one needs any more explanation, right, that unraveling codependency, uh, Whispers of Love Oracle, this is the party turner, and we save it until last. Uh, it's the voices of the higher selves of all, 
involved. Now, I will say this is now a sole contract read, because you can't have a codependent relationship with an inanimate object, all right? That's called an addiction. <laughs> That's definitely that. Uh, and even if you are dealing with that or dealing with somebody who does have a physical addiction like that where they are a slave to it, well, codependency, the original term, was usually about the, uh, the enablers of alcoholics. But, uh, codependent no more, Melody Beatty, brilliant book. Uh, but that the phrase has morphed, well, right? A and, and it's way bigger in its scope than it ever was. Please take a nice deep breath. <sighs> hmm. Higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above. Please, what is the whisper of love? For this Virgo collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading, alchemizing the slave from lead to gold with the healing angel of trust, smoky quartz, that protection, that emotional purification, right? That that grounding. So they're because if they're all up here in their heads with this eight of blades up in the third eye, it's an alarm system saying your heart's not open, right? And and to do that, right, with that, that nine of pentacles, to be like, I'm going to give myself the love I need. I'm going to love myself through these thoughts because I, I need not know, but I'm surrendering my will to the divine because I feel like a slave or they feel like whatever. And I'm going to unravel codependence because only I have to feel good about my choices. And if I'm surrendering my will to the divine, then I'm fulfilling divine will. So please, what is their piece of information, inspiration, or insight they need about all of this? This full moon in Sag, waiting to noon in Gem. Love endures. Love does not give up or lose faith. Love is hopeful and withstands every situation. Now... I don't think that means you stay in a codependent patterning. You can stay in a relationship with somebody where there's a codependent patterning there. In other words, you didn't fuck up. You didn't make a mistake. Oh, I'm in a codependent patterning again, right? It's something that is written in for the development of your soul, right, into this lifetime. And, and you know what? There's so many quantum variations. If you're not doing the codependent pattern with this person in another timeline, you're doing it with another person. So really, Course in Miracles, check it out at some point. Uh, we're not in control of the curriculum. We only get to choose what we want to take at a certain time. <laughs> it's in the introduction. Uh, love endures. This is about the divine power within you, right? The love that you can give yourself will never give up on you, will never lose faith in the soul, the truth of who you are, and uh, can give you hope to help you withstand every situation, including shadow work, right? How difficult is it if you've been betrayed over and over and over and over again to surrender your will to the divine, right? And again, whatever lens you want to look at the divine through, right? It's hard to stare at the sun, right? And put filters. Okay, today it's Zeus, tomorrow it's Jesus, tomorrow it's... But whatever you do, right? The Om, right? You totally go past the idea of, of personality or identity in terms of divinity. Oh, let me just put it all together. I get exactly what this is. And you know what's weird is I am... I have been doing this for the past two weeks. All right. Sometimes they send me ahead. Please take a nice deep breath. My collective pantheons of the divine, and let's say it, and the mother of all. Please, may the entire Virgo collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm not just the ones watching this video, receiving this reading, please be blessed with all that they need, with the shadow work necessary for their healing and through the quantum unity of it all, the healing of all sentient life. This uh, uh, full moon in Sagittarius waning to new... <laughs> In Gemini, that they uh, may surrender their power of choice to the divine with complete trust in terms of the decisions that are spinning around in their head with no idea, no direction where to go, so that they can work with a piece of smoky quartz to do that shadow work, to feel their feelings, to express themselves in a safe way, oh, bringing immense healing to themselves holistically because they have everything they need from the outside looking and they're fine on their own right now to make this decision that no one else can make for them because only they have to feel good about their choices and to call upon the healing angel of trust to guide them and assist them and whisper in their ear or open the book to the page or give them that song on the radio to says we've got you because that kind of love this kind of love surrendering your will to the divine this love endures it doesn't give up or lose faith in you in them in us 
love is hopeful and withstands every situation. May we all be so blessed with that when it's our time to learn that lesson we will, but for the Virgo Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, may we be so blessed that we may unravel codependency, endure with grace, with ease, surrendering our will to the divine, no longer a slave, but a master for the well-being of all. So mo to be. <laughs> so it is. Sorry, I can hear the music in my head because I'm clear audience and I know as soon as I tap the table, that's where the music starts. <laughs> Could probably hum along with it. Maybe next time I will. Oh God, if you liked it, liked it. Want more, subscribe, you know, share my shit. Let people know. It's like, he's fun and he's clear because I am. Because uh, I've been doing this since I'm 12 years old, not these decks, obviously, and YouTube did not exist yet. We just used to scrawl on the cave walls with bones and plants. <laughs> Otherwise, guys, like, uh, uh, check out my book, Words of Grace. A lot of what is in this reading is in that book. Um, but otherwise, y you know, have at it, comment below, and all that jazz, because what else can I do, my beloved uh, Virgos, Virgo power, but wish you the very best and the very blessed of this full moon in Sagittarius, <laughs> waning to new in Gemini, and then a Gemini retrograde and every other planet going backwards, it seems. So may we hang in there together. We're all in this together. And I love you. I love you. I love you. Hang in there. I believe in you. Hail. Farewell. And blessed, blessed be.